and I um, met a few months back and this was our conversation. We couldn't stop talking about sex and the older women. She had to remind me what it was, of course, because it's been a <laughs> while for me. Uh, but before we launch into that, I really want to give a big shout out to uh, Francesca Cassini, who birthed this wonderful TV and who is so much part of the relaunch of the Silver TV, giving us all an incredible opportunity. Uh, just an amazing vision from Francesca. So I, um, my name's Gwen. I am in my 60s and uh, I have a background in counselling, working with families, trained in Tantra, shamanic practices. I'm a celebrant, run workshops, and I'm just a very curious woman, really. And I'm particularly curious about sex and the older women. I'd like to introduce Diane. Diane, I'm going to read what you uh, wrote about yourself, and then you, I'll, I'll hand it over to you to expand on that and let me know why you're here on the panel today, which I have to say thank you because it takes courage and I really appreciate you being here. You and Sunday. We seem to have lost Sunday. Oh, there you're back. So Diane is a change and transition doula, walking alongside people as they journey on their life's path, assisting them to overcome blocks providing information for them from other realms, drawing on ancient wisdom from past lives and the ancestors, helping to ease people on their journeys, whether they are incarnate, discarnate, or passing over, enabling them to fully unfold to live the life they are truly meant to live. Thank you, Diane. Thanks, Gwen. Um, yeah, I actually only got those words yesterday. Literally, I woke up and that was what spirit delivered to me. So that was really nice. So, um, yeah, to, just to add a little bit more to that. So my work is called The Heart of Joy, and that's about the five fields of being. And those are being on purpose, being with emotions, being playful, being prayerful and being love. So playing in all these fields for me means that we're living a fully embodied life. So part of my interest in today's topic um, is that I feel it's an important aspect of life and living and has elements in all of those five fields of being. Um, so for me, it's, you know, really fundamental, like, like many other fundamentals of our lives, you know, and it, and it flows across all of those areas. And um, but also, you know, just being a 64 year old woman who's lived a life so far and I hope to live for many more years yet and uh, you know being around and I've you know first opened up to um, well got curious about boys when I was in my junior school years and um, you know my first boyfriend um, sort of um, when I was about 10 um, which was all very sweet and innocent and chatting about very serious topics as you do at age 10 you know what it's like and we also in our class there was a group of girls um, we had the facts of life club which was terribly serious and my friend made the official membership cards you know and and we used to talk about these very <laughs> serious topics like you know the fact that her sister used to use these things called tampons that you know they used to go to the chemist for and she didn't really know quite what they were all about um so that was kind of the sort of innocent age of you know not quite knowing what it's all about but kind of knowing there's something out there to you know to explore um and then in my teens you know kind of self-pleasure and boyfriends really came in and in in my teens and yeah I've been through many relationships so um but I also think it's something that so many people particularly women seem to give up on and I think that's really sad um because to me it's like you know kind of gorgeous and juicy and there's you know it's really nice to to have fun and I think a lot of women if they allow themselves can really discover a lot about sex and themselves and and pleasure in all its good forms. Um, so yeah, there you go. I'll stop talking now. 
you. And, mm. and, and thank you for taking us back to when we were, when we were, <laughs> you brought back lots of memories there for me. <laughs> you did for me too, Diane. That was lovely. Um, yeah, and I, I think we're going to come back to this point about giving up on, on sex because yeah. I think it's a really a valid one and one we can talk about a lot. So I'll, um, I'll take it from here for a moment. So I'll just introduce myself. Um, my name is Melanie Knight. Um, I um, am trained as a sexological body worker which you might not know the term, but basically it's, it's body work and sex coaching and everything rolled into one. Um, I've also done a lot of Tantra and most of my work is, is very Tantric principle based. Um, and I will love working with women. And, you know, I, I, I turned 50 just over a year ago, I'll be 52 this year. Um, and went into the menopause last year as well. And so for me, there's a lot of changes around my body and what I wanted. I left a relationship that wasn't, wasn't working where the sex had died. And I didn't want that, that to happen. My partner was happy with it and I wasn't. Um, and I'm now in a beautiful tantric relationship and uh, making love lots and lots and lots and having lots of fun and really enjoying that. So and now i um, really passionate about teaching other women um, this sort of this sort of stuff. So I'm going to leave it there for now and I'm going to I'll introduce Sunday. Um, so you uh, are a estrangement and relationship coach who loves to talk about tough things, good, the good place to be today and find connection through the differences. And your dream is a community with space for lots of connections and differences. So maybe if you want to add to that and say a bit about why you're here today. Yeah, why am I here today? Um, well it eats a tough topic so that's probably and I have a that sort of okay let's do the difficult stuff I have that very much as part of my personality and um yeah I'm in my 60s and I've got stories to tell around my own sexuality and where I'm at now with it and I think it is a subject because there's this thing this myth that I kind of sort of like have hovering around that once you pass a certain age, it's either too difficult, too painful, um, all that sort of, um, that we're invisible, that we're sort of sexless. And I've had, some, I've had some really good conversations, which I'll talk about a bit later on with some younger people around this. Um, I was brave enough to ask whether a young man found me, I'm talking about it now, aren't I? Found me attractive as an older woman because my assumption would be that he wouldn't. And it was interesting having this conversation with different um, generations listening. It was tough. Um, but I'm here because um, I like to talk about things that probably get sort of pushed aside and people perhaps want avidly want to know about it, but find it very difficult to talk about death being another one money probably being another but sex I think is really important like Diane says it's like it runs through so many themes in our in our aspects of, of our life my life so yeah that's why I'm here today and just to talk a little bit about me and the work that I do estrangement and it was interesting because you asked the question what is that an estrangement is well, adult child estrangement is something that seems to be growing exponentially as adult children are rejecting, cutting off from families uh, as well as, as parents. And so that is the work that I do, work with the parents who've been estranged by their adult children. And that's been born from my own experience and also my coaching background just sort of eased me down that path. It's been... Um, been very unusual it's not something I had on my to-do list it's something that I feel has been caught I've been called to do so um yeah thank you thank you, thank you. that's great thank you Sunday for that I really want to hear what they said these young <laughs> yeah <people. laughs> the what? what did you say the, the man the boy the person you were talking to about whether you were attractive or not what did he say he said he raised his eyebrows and said yes 
Oh, and, and I sort of, I didn't know whether he was being polite or because I was saying, you know, my assumption is that young men like you would not find a woman of my age attractive, sexually attractive. And and he, he I said, I don't know whether you do or you don't. And his, he was affirming, he wasn't rejecting. And I don't know whether that was his truth. Because if I'd have come on to him, you know, talk about these, um, mm. what, are they, what are we call these women who go Cougars. after these cougars? <laughs> I'm not a cougar, <laughs> but it's interesting. I, I don't I don't know if this is where you want to go, but I noticed today particularly I put a dress on. I haven't worn a dress for ages. And I thought, where is my sexuality as I wear this dress? How am I walking? How am I showing myself? Am I visible or am I hiding? And, and that for me, most of the time, I am not in that space. I'm not walking in my sexuality. And it's something maybe that I want to remind myself to do. Might I ask you, did you, when you were younger, is there a difference between uh, the age you are now and how you walk and, and how you did it when you were younger, how you dressed and walked? Mm, yeah. It's interesting. I was raised on a farm. I did lots of boy man jobs. The incongruence of wearing work clothes during the day and then going out in a dress and all that, that a huge transition. I was confused about my femininity for a long time. And then I developed these beautiful things on the front of me and I was stunned at how much attention they drew. And I was horrified as well. People used to throw peanuts. I used to wear low tops when I was 16. I remember my sister saying to my mum, Sunday's boobs won't grow any bigger, will they mum? <laughs> 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 I don't know whether she was slightly envious or what, but and I was a lot younger than her, so she was probably watching out for me. Um, but yeah, my, as a younger woman, I was aware that I could draw attention and traction, and I had that love hate thing that I think many of us do. And I think that probably is still the same today. But now, if I get a wolf whistle, if ever I do, and it's very rare, and I'm sad that they've gone because on one level they were really affirming. I mean, they were a bit um, intrusive, but you know, now I'm happy to look round and think, was that for me? <laughs> I, I this is this really brings up for me about the wild, sassy, sexy woman mm. that used to strut her stuff, and because I'm older. Somehow, and it's what you're saying, Sunday. You know, suddenly it's like I have this uh, program that says you can't do that anymore. You know, because you're you're no longer sexy. You're no longer young. You know, you've got flabby skin. Your tits have dropped down to your belly button. You know, why <laughs> would you do that and make such a fool of yourself? But I do also notice that. I, I, uh, after I was with Melanie the other day and we were having all these conversations <laughs> about sex and I have to add toys, sex toys as yeah, well. Yeah, we were talking about sex toys. <laughs> we were talking about sex toys and she talked about this sucky sex toy and I immediately felt like I was <laughs> orgasm. Anyway, all the way home. She only had to think about it. It was so funny. <laughs> think about it and I was like, whoa. But I must have still been exuding that energy. Mm -hmm. All the way home on the bus, men were giving me a look, and mm -hmm. and so having got the look, I I felt good, you know. Mm -hmm. And I like to pride myself on it's not the external factors that matter; it's the internal. But getting those looks and, and having a wink and a, a side glance made me feel so good and sexy mm. and womanly and sensual again. So. Yeah, that was beautiful. But I think this also comes back to what Diane was saying about it's a being as well, because, you know, when we, we talked about the sex toys, we didn't actually do anything. But then it was that that being that you drove home, you went home with that actually was lighting up, you know, and you got that reflected back. But it was, to me, this is, you know, when we come from pleasure and connected to our own sexuality, 
we have a very different being that that lights up rooms that that you know that often we we lose because of a lot of the stuff we've just been talking about so Diane yeah. I'll come back to you as well do you think you know you walk with people through life and you talked about the juiciness you know what what describe a bit of that juiciness as an older woman can you give us a little bit of a insight into your juiciness I'm living vicariously here now by the way <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Well, I think we all do that sometimes, don't we? You know, it's, it's good to hear stories from other people. Yeah. Actually, what I'm being taken back to is was after I split up with my son's father, was actually a bit younger than the tent group, if you like, because um, I was just before my 40th. It was in the year of my 40th birthday. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I went on this huge kind of who am I, what am I, what happened, what's that all about, what's life all about stuff. And I started to kind of explore things and connecting with uh, places and people. And interestingly, before we started this, you mentioned Osho Leela, Melanie, and mm. um, that's what a place that I did go back in the early 2000s because I I'd met someone in the 90s who who was a follower of our show and um you know I went there and there was some great stuff there just in terms of some people and kind of how they were and their being and being free but one of the things I found when I so I moved from Scotland down to London and when I made that move I started going dancing and that was fantastic because that was a real reconnect with my physicality and because I've always loved to dance and that was one of the things I'd kind of stopped doing a lot of the time when I was married and so it was really interesting and discovering all these blokes you know there's lots of these really cool guys you know and I could dance with them and it was really good fun and you know we we're doing salsa dancing so there was this kind of there's something about moving and kind of feeling inside and actually going yeah actually I am, you know, kind of juicy here. You know, it's See that. you I know, you Diane. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and but but it's it's open to everybody. That's the thing, you know. But I think so many women, particularly of my generation or older, were taught that that's not right. Oh, you absolutely. Know? Yeah. You know, it's you know, you're not a good girl. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, and all sorts of ugh, crap goes on top. Mm. So I was very grateful that in a lot of ways I was a bit of a rebel. So, you know, finding masturbation when I was in my teens was nice, you know, because it's like, you know, yeah, because it was a great way. Because like, like most women, I do a lot of sex in my head, you know, because that's, you know, well known <laughs> that that's what we do, isn't it? And so, you know, I could imagine the boyfriend <laughs> who I had at the time, who I wasn't necessarily doing all these things with, but, you know, kind of imagining things, you know, and that was cool. <laughs> it was really good fun. Um, so, yeah, and, and discovering orgasm, you know, that was, yeah, because that is amazing. And, you know, it's still fun now and hopefully for many years to come. <laughs> so what, what is your take on pleasure, Diane? What, what comes to mind if we start to talk about desire and pleasure? Yeah, well, that could be all sorts of things. I'm very tactile. Um, so I love touch and cuddles and kissing. A good snog. Can't be a good snog. I haven't oh. had one of those for a while now because I haven't <laughs> had a partner for a while. So, you know, that's kind of, damn it, yes, you know. But but a guy who can kiss well is always always a plus in my book um and and from that you know you can get into the play stuff you know so things like you know f eating fruit together you yeah. know and how sexy that can be god that can be sexy um I uh, there was a guy that I was um involved with for a while back or oh, yeah back in the early 2000s now and he was a lovely chap he came from um Lebanon is where, where he was from and he was he was very into physicality and stuff you know and we we had a lot of fun playing with fruit and things you know yeah it's cool <laughs> it's good stuff so yeah so pleasure can be all sorts of things mm. um but it doesn't have to be full-on sex and that's what you know where people sort of I think sometimes get a bit stuck or muddled or uncertain or whatever yeah 
Yeah, I was going to add that, Diane, because I think a lot of people I work with, uh, it's very often when you talk about pleasure, it's it's very often attributed to the sex act or the orgasm. Mm. And, and when you talk about pleasure, there's there's a world of pleasure, you know, with Absolutely. your body, just with touch, with caresses, with mm-hmm. play, with fun. Yeah. You know, and I think I think um, you know, expanding our definition of of what is pleasure for a lot of people, you yeah. know, into what some of the stuff you're talking about is is really beautiful for a lot of people and and as something new because yeah. we don't we haven't been taught a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And people are scared, I think, sometimes just to explore. It's like, should Mm. I be doing this? Oh, I'm not sure. It's a bit naughty. Um, Am Mm. I allowed to be naughty? Well, yeah, go be naughty. That's all I say. Everybody be naughty. You know, it's good fun. (laughs) (laughs) I love I love being naughty, too. That's (laughs) I, I can tell. I can you tell. Can tell can you? <laughs> but in saying that, I mean, I love to be naughty, but there's also the other part where I've felt like I've held myself back a lot in relationships because of fear of rejection from partners, thinking I was weird or, you know, that they wouldn't want what I wanted. Mm. Um, so I think there's there's also that as well sometimes fear about you know can we explore new things what you know will I be accepted if I want to do that yeah I think for me what's coming up for me is something around desire you know being um I you know I've got a partner I've got a husband and um it's a little bit different at the moment. We haven't got that in our lives. And I miss being desired and wanted and actually being lusted after, which sounds bizarre because, you know, there was times when I didn't want that, you know, um, I didn't want somebody going, oh, come here, let me squeeze you, let me, oh, come here. You know, that sort of, Mm. I have a playful approach, I think, to sex and, and, um, you know, and, I, and at this point, I want to honor the men because actually for me, you know, as a younger woman, I was absolutely in the dark. I had no idea. And when the first time that my then husband did certain things, I was thought, my bloody hell, what's going on here then? <laughs> 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 All I'd watched was, well, I'd seen mum and dad, but not in that sense, but lots of animals, you know, being on a farm. It was like... <laughs> And I'll tell you what shocked me the most, because yeah. when I was at school young, I heard the word F-U-C-K, I won't say it properly on here. And then when somebody said to me that that was the slang name for the sex act, it, I was shocked. And I probably would be about nine, ten, because to me, and I God knows where I got this from, the sex act for me was something that was sort of, honorable sacred and and I'm so glad I don't know where that came from but I'm so glad I had that in my knowing because that word for me was offensive and didn't actually describe Mm. the act of that Mm. at Mm. all for me so I don't yeah that that so going back to this honoring the men and 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 being tuned into desire and my concern that I might not be desired ever again mm. is is a bit of a thing for me anyway I did um we did we do talk about it and I did go off and have a tantric massage a couple of years ago and I didn't quite know what I was letting myself in for I, you know I me just You're very and, brave Sunday <laughs> well life's for living isn't it, it is definitely and, uh, I love know, it, it if there's something that's slightly scary, I'm going to be the one that says, oh, I'll give it a go. So I toddled off and I had the most wonderful experience with this beautiful man who was mm-hmm. so in his um, whole sacred energy and had the most amazing massage, complete with uh, in- intimate touching, but nothing that was... It, within it was sort of on the surface intimate touching if that makes sense yeah and it was amazing mm-hmm. I didn't have what I would call 
any sort of or I think I was too tightened up to be truly in my pleasure mm. um but it was it was pleasurable but I didn't have what I know I can achieve in realms of orgasmic ecstasy either and that's been so different throughout my life and I tune into so many different orgasms now as a woman who kind of knows herself quite well mm. and even like I can do it to myself even without anything around and touching those celestial orgasms that are just like all over encompassing mm -hmm. that aren't genital based and just tr recharging me at a cellular level I believe oh, it's beautiful I I we were talking about this the other day um mm. because a bit like you, Sunday, I can do it with the breath. Mm. So, and again, you know, no, no touching, but it's just mm. especially with the breath. And of course, having studied Tantra, then um, I, I can use the breath and raise the breath and take it up through the body. And like you say, it's like a, a full body orgasm, but it's, it's, it's totally different completely and utterly different and i think it's worth saying to any of our viewers out there just because they might not have heard of these different types of orgasms i think there are i can't i haven't got a list in front of me but i think there's <laughs> something like 70 odd different types of orgasms that people have listed um like breast orgasm laughing orgasm vaginal orgasm clitoral orgasm the g-spot orgasm and, you know, I think, you know, a lot of it is that, that people haven't been, again, coming back to, we're not taught, they're not aware of what is possible. Someday it sounds like you've had some incredible spiritual experiences that yeah, and some you've been very going, fortunate. Thank you. And going back to honouring the men, because I think they opened the portal, mm. you know? So I loved what you said about honouring men, because I think it's so easy especially, you know, the older we get after maybe failed relationships and stuff to become jaded about men and, you know, and angry and frustrated because we've had relationships fail or whatever. But I think it's really beautiful that you're talking mm. about honouring men because, again, from the other side, men weren't taught how to honour women no. and how to pleasure women. And a lot of what they know is from porn or from, you know, from sites on the internet and stuff. So I think that's really beautiful. And um, you, your experience of a tantric massage made me remember a beautiful one that was when I first met my partner, he became my partner. And on our third date, he offered me a tantric massage. And I was in tears for most of it. Energy was running through me, but I was in tears because I'd come out of a sexless relationship where, you know, I hadn't been desired for a long time. I hadn't, you know, I'd been feeling very rejected in that relationship. Um, and, you know, we were like friends. There was some love there, but there certainly wasn't, you know, that real profound love. And then I meet this man and he performs this tantric massage and he's looking at me with desire and honoring me as a goddess and worshiping me and, you know, touching me with love and connection. And it was just, just blew my mind. Mm. And, you know, I just think this is where there is that healing with the masculine and feminine as well. Mm. So it's incredible what you shared. I just want to add as well that obviously so many of us, I mean, I hold my hands up. I've had bad experiences with men as well. So overcoming those other types of sexual unions or abuse or whatever you want to call it is, you know, how many of us have actually managed to re recover, reclaim our sexuality as a result of those damaged times that we've had. You know, I was molested as a child and I, to this day, I'm so grateful that I escaped. That could have been so much worse than it was. I was sexually molested. Mm. And for years I held that and it, it stopped me from kissing. I didn't want to kiss anybody. And I'd only be, again, I'd be about 10 when this happened. 
and where all my teenage friends when I got to be teenage years that so closed me down to that Mm -hmm. that exploration um and and you know there's other things that people have to to have to deal with and recover from and and I guess some of us struggle to do that and and it cuts us off from the sexuality and as you get older I guess that you know I just want to acknowledge that it yeah there's the other side of it all isn't there as well yeah and that's why I do the work that I do because Mm. so many of us have um you know you know either had that sort of level of abuse in our past and and rape and 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 stuff like that but even if you haven't you know many of us have had our boundaries crossed of you know not said no when we didn't want sex have said yes when we you know to go along with something and I think this causes huge amounts of problems in our ability to be intimate in relationships in what you've just shared so again, it's really beautiful that you've managed to move past that. Yeah, I think for me, a lot of that is learning to fall back in love with yourself. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, you know, that for me was key um, to healing all sorts of things, you know, um, and made a big difference. And then just deciding I was going to have fun. Mm. And it was and that it was okay to have fun <laughs> <laughs> giving myself permission to do things uh, I would have thought were outrageous when I was younger I have to say <laughs> so I became one of those women in her middle ages who was discovering all sorts of things that were just outrageous um yeah not as outrageous as many people I know but you know, <laughs> still, still outrageous yeah like I could probably list some outrageous things as well <laughs> But I think uh, there was two things you said there, which is um, about loving yourself. And one of the questions prompts we have for our talk today was about loving, you know, what do we think about our bodies? Because I think bodies and our view of our bodies are very much about loving ourselves. So what do you, how do you feel about your body as, a, as an older woman? Anyone who wants to answer that. Okay, I'll go. Um... It keeps changing, the blooming mm. thing. <laughs> it does. I just, get you, I just get used to it being like it is. And then it <laughs> bloody well changes again. Yeah, I have my days where I think, oh, my goodness me. And then there's other days where I look at myself and I think, wow. Yeah. And then there's other days where I don't even consider it. But I think for me, I think now as an older woman, I have a lot of gratitude towards it. And that in itself, I think, helps me to have empathy with it because it's been through a lot. I've thrown it at things. I've allowed it to be used and abused. And I've not just, I've been the one that sort of hammered it. I'm looking at myself. I've got, <laughs> got my legs out and I'm looking at, you know, there's the, there's the scars of living on it. And um and I haven't worn a bra for about four years now. And I thought at first that everything would go south and it would lose. And actually, she, they've loved being out free. And I'm still coming to terms with um, being okay in the summer. Pattern tops are great. Anything that's tight and the same colour are just like, oh, no, can't go out in that. And... It's strange, isn't it? You know, I, there's a part of me that really just wants to not, I want to be aware of my body and I also want to be in it and just being with it rather than it, me thinking it's on show. And I, it's funny because like this attraction thing again, when I'm walking around and I'm not conscious and, and like oozing sexuality or whatever that may be. And like Ooh, oozing sexuality or whatever that may be. <laughs> Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and and it it's it's in, it's an interesting question, you know. Like, do I love my body? Like, how do I feel about my body? And it's so varied on different days. And on the days, you know, sometimes I'll touch myself, stroke myself, put oil on, you know, really take the time to be be with my body in that that sense. And then other days I just forget about it and 
don't don't put the right things in it. Sometimes there's a little voice that's going, uh, Sunday, what are you putting that in your mouth for? And sometimes I'll just ignore it because that's the way I am. So I think on the whole, I love it. I appreciate it. I honour it. And there's times when it's something other than that. That's lovely. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Diane? I would. I uh, that oh, I heard a lot. That really, I could relate a lot to that Sunday, and actually, it was very good for me to hear that. I have noticed this year that here, when I put my arm down, it's really wrinkly, and I really don't like it. It's like of all the things that could have happened, and my legs. It's like when you do a downward dog, suddenly the skin that was at the top of your thighs is now down at your knees. <laughs> you know, and you're like, what is happening? And because <laughs> sharpy dog, you know, well, those wrinkly dogs. And and I don't like it. And it's only been this summer when I thought I can't wear a a a a something without sleeves, because I really don't want to expose it. But then I think, <laughs> hope Francesca doesn't approve of this now, but then I think, what would it be like having sex and I was on top? I think, I don't think I could do that. I mean, going back to what you were saying, <laughs> wild days, you know, I'm, I'm still a whip, you know. I, mean, <laughs> I don't even know if I could do that anymore because I, I think I have become so conscious of my wrinkles. Mm -hmm. And I, would, I've al I always loved my skin. My skin was just, it was always so, I had beautiful skin and now it's gone wrinkly and... I want to love it. You know, I want to appreciate it. I want the. I want to let go of the programming uh, because we live in a youth culture. We live in a glam culture. You know, we don't. We don't um, honor and uh, really kind of respect the the older look. You know, and everything, all the advertising, everywhere you look and go, it's about how you can smell better, look younger, be wrinkle free. It's all about age, but not in a body positive way. Mm -hmm. I think this is something we have to have more conversations about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just about the educating. It's about talking about these things. It's about being being will, willing to be vulnerable and intimate in our conversations as well mm. yeah one of the things I was just thinking as you were talking that Gwen because for me yes um wrinkles and stuff like that my hands are starting to look like a wrinkly old woman's hands and I'm like oh my god how did that happen mm -hmm. but for me it's more than that I think for me it's also around um changes in my body that's not working as as they used to yeah. so I have a I have a prolapse um which is constantly out of my body I do have a one of the pessary rings that I can fit but when I was when I was recently single four years ago I was like oh my god you know a man's gonna look at me and think what's this weird thing sticking out of my body and so I was like, oh, my God, you know, am I going to be attractive to a man anymore? Mm -hmm. um, and um, Gwen knows this, but I think don't think you guys know this. I've got arthritis and just had a total hip replacement. But I've suffered with arthritis for about seven years um, with, um, you know, lots of big high levels of pain and limited mobility. So again, thinking about, you know, when I was thinking, can I get into a relationship again? I was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to have to have a man that's going to be understanding about my pain levels and ability. And would, would someone want to accept that? Would a man yeah. find me attractive with all of that stuff? You know, somehow I feel less than as a, as a woman. And this is a really important topic because we don't have the same agility. You know, our bodies uh, don't 
perhaps move and uh, and we have disabilities like both you and I have had hip replacements so we know what it's like to have to um, accommodate uh, a painful not being able to get into certain postures that you might mm. not want to when having a sexual experience that would be enjoyable but yeah. having move and accommodate in order to relieve the pain or the disability or whatever. And this is another aspect of, uh, for a lot of older women. And, and I think perhaps why a lot of women and men, just going back to what you're saying, Sandy, to honor the men, you know, give up on sex. Mm -hmm. But like we've said, it isn't a, only about sex. It's about pleasure and enjoyment and really, and sensuality. So it doesn't have to be about sex and chasing an orgasm. It can be that, again, like we've said here, that wonderful ecstatic physical experience that can come from even just smelling a flower. You know, like you said, Diane, putting a piece of fruit in your mouth and, and absolutely enjoying the succulents, the deliciousness, to use our all our senses and be in different states. And this is where the conversations and the education comes in. So as we can move away from this narrow-minded idea around sex, sexual relationships, and expand our thinking into something with greater awareness and that we can receive and, and, and to teach ourselves how to receive these things, ask and receive. So I think we've got many more conversations. <laughs> we definitely have. And I think um, one of the things that um, Gwen, you were pointing to there to me is around um, slowing down and very mindful practices and that's what tantric practices teaches you and I think one of the things that um you know I'm finding with um you know women post-menopause is often we're much more wanting to explore pleasure and slow down and en the enjoyment of of just yeah. like touch or feeding your partner or just you know enjoying moment by moment I think it also comes back to what Diane was saying earlier about allowing ourselves to enjoy and have fun. Because mm. I think as women as also, we've been taught very much, you know, we've always, always got to be busy. We've got to look after people. We've got to, mm. you know, it's got, <laughs> we've got to do the housework, the, you know, keep a business running or whatever it is we do. And I think, you know, we're not very often allowing ourselves to slow down and take time to explore and have pleasure. Yeah, actually, on, sorry, go on. Sorry, no, I was just gonna bring it on to one of the other points we've got, which I think is related to this because we are gonna have to finish up soon, but that is, uh, that is around what are you longing for, yearning for? What do you desire deep down? And this is questions to the panel to share whatever comes up for them. It's interesting because you say, what do, what do you desire? And it's like, well, I don't know, because I'm such an in the moment person. There's there's a lot about that, just kind of enjoying the moment. So, for example, a while ago, I had a moment. There was a guy, <laughs> I, was, I was at a cafe down the road. I live around the corner from the high street here, and it's lovely. We've got loads of cafes. Great. So I decided to go and hang out in one of the cafes one day to do some work. And I was leaving, and this chap stopped deliberately to open the door for me and we started talking and and he just had this real cheeky way about him and I love cheeky guys and it was just so much fun <laughs> and, and it was just this we just had this just lovely interaction it was really great fun really great fun and then a few days later I took my mum shopping and when I take my mum shopping I sit at the by the checkouts waiting for her to go round because she likes to go around on her own and um this chap started talking to me because I was reading a paper and we got into this conversation and his wife came along and it was really funny and she was like why what's this conversation what's happening here and it was really interesting just the whole kind of yeah way it went on I don't know it's interesting yeah yeah 
Mm. It's funny the stuff that comes up, but it's but there is a, this thing about just allowing you know yourself to be is okay. Mm. You know, do that. Yeah. Mm. And I think so many people don't, you know, because they, oh, I can't do that. I can't behave. Like, oh, I couldn't possibly. I can't, you know, you were talking about wearing low cut tops, Sunday, you know, you know, it's like, oh, I can't possibly wear a low cut top because my delicatage does not look like it used to, you know, or something <laughs> like, like, oh, sod it, you know. No, actually, do you know what? You can look really gorgeous, you know. <laughs> Just do it, you know. And because so much of attractiveness mm. comes from actually just enjoying yourself yep and and just going I'm okay so you know let's go you know and have fun you know and it's it, it is you know because it's it's an inner thing and that is incredibly attractive to people mm-hmm. incredibly Me attractive and, that's, and I think I think that's where a lot of people say, you know because I, I keep hearing this thing you know women as we get older we're invisible and I'm thinking well, are you, or is it that you're saying you're invisible? Therefore, that's what you believe. Therefore, that's what you project. Therefore, you hide. You know, you 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 are invisible. I don't know. I don't know. Great point. I love that. I yeah. think yeah, and I think some of that society, like you know, we we taught that older generations uh, go out to pasture, retire, do you know, and and some of it is you know what we take on. I think as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, I'm very grateful that I've got parents who are still around. They're both 93. Mm. And Mm. I don't know what they do these days, anything physically. We don't discuss that because I wouldn't. That wouldn't be fair. But I know that they were definitely sexually active. Well, you know, at least well into their 70s and probably a bit beyond that, actually. And I think it would be only in recent times that they probably stopped. If, you know, if they have, they may not have stopped totally. And good on them if they haven't. <laughs> I agree. That's brilliant. What about you, Sunday? What do you desire and long for? Uh, what Diane was saying, you know, that spontaneous, those moments of connection with people in, a, in mutual appreciation and fun. Um, uh, yeah, giving myself permission to... So today has been great. And that's, I guess, because this call was coming up, you know, wearing a dress. I went to a fire ceremony, which was, is a monthly thing that I do. Um, So walking around on the land in a dress is very much what I used to do. But as a farmer, I would do it in clothes that weren't flowy and um, getting dressed up. Mm. Um. And then to, this afternoon, I went down to the river and there was nobody about. And I, I've had a swim and, I, you know, feeling that the, the river water is so different to seawater or pool water. And there was only me. And um, what do I long for is, is capturing those moments of bliss that are all around me. So mm. it's remembering that. So these ducks and ducklings came. She obviously won. I was laid out in the sun drying off and four little chicks. And I knew one of them was going to nip me toes and it did. And they were so close to me. <laughs> I felt like part of their family. So, and, you know, and, and the sensual, the sensuality of nature being, it sounds a bit ethereal. You know, when people talk about getting into nature and yet it's so powerful, isn't it? Yes. Feeling the wind, being conscious of the wind and the sun and the heat. I love it warm. Perhaps mm. I long for living in a warm climate mm. to feel <laughs> to feel the, the sun on my skin, caressing my skin, not burning it, but just caressing yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I also long for an intimate, lusty, hearty relationship mm-hmm. with a man and um and, I, and it'll be interesting to see that how that evolves you know with both of us with our physical limitations at the moment as six as early 60 year olds as we are so um watch this space oh looking <laughs> forward to even more Sunday yeah <laughs> I think one of my desires, I was just thinking as you were both talking, is, um, is um, a, yeah, a deep down desire to be met fully. 
And um, I think I think someone said this earlier. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but I was talking to someone about um, this too muchness that I think a lot of us are taught over time. Certainly I had this experience of many partners that I was too much. I was too sexual. I was too loud. I was too adventurous. I was too, you know, too vocal. Um, And to have a partner that completely accepts me for who I am and matches me and wants and desires me to that level that, of intensity that I, I want and need deep down is, is something that I really desire. What about you, Gwen? Mm, I, I, I would love to have that as well. This this being the um, the solstice, I I actually chanted in my beloved last night. Oh, lovely! As a sort of ceremonial act because I am ready. I've had three significant relationships in my life, all very very different, and I have been separated six years now, and have have been in, in relationship with myself really and that has been what I needed and that that is very much about getting to know myself and and having that deeper connection with myself and clearing some of um the memories that are stuck in the cell memory particularly right you know doing the tantra work around the root area the pelvis mm. Area, the sacral area, the holding, and that 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 went on there for me. You know, memories of my mother's tormenting voice about what 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 men wanted, and and I had to be a virgin, and and all these things that I had to let all that go, and and that took time in order for me to know what I want now what I'm willing to take in. You know, I took in men into my physical body when, not not for me, but for them. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of having to release energy around that, you know. Um, so this time has been really important and it's been like a preparation, particularly as an older woman, because I'd like to step into a very different relationship. Like you say, mm-hmm. Melanie, one where I was met one where I felt freedom like you're talking about Sunday and fun that you talk about Diane you know to be able to just fully express myself and be myself but to have I have a sense that um I had this experience where I felt like my beloved was supposed to come in with me and didn't uh, during this lifetime but I have this other intuitive sense that I can call him in. I, so that is what I'm doing because I'm ready now and I want to explore it. And um, so that would be what I would long for and hope for. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Gwen. We're going to have to wrap up shortly. So I just want to give everyone a chance to just say some final words that you might might you know to finish up what, what what how have you found this call what have you learned what what are you anything you want to say to finish up who would like to go me it's just been sparking and prompting lots of thoughts and memories you know which has been really interesting just sort of revisiting things in my mind as we you know we've been talking together um and it's not about sex but it was going back to your question about what do I think about my body one of the most if not the most profound experience I've ever had with my own body was when I had a hysteroscopy so that's where they put a camera inside the womb And um, the consultant said, was watching because I was awake for the procedure and the consultant was watching me. And he said, "Uh, would you like to see what we've been looking at? Oh, and I said, yes, please. (laughs) So I sat there, you know, so they turned this big screen round, you know, um, 
And I sat there in awe and I just found it incredibly moving. And I still do, I still feel it. Um, that was the home for my son for nine months. Mm. And it was the home for two little ones who I lost, who were still around in spirit, but I lost them before they had a chance to land on the earth plane. And it was just an incredible experience. And I, you know, and for that, I, you know, I'm profoundly grateful to my body for what it was, you know, and that's, yeah, just amazing. Amazing. It really was beautiful. Oh, I've got room viewing Mm. envy now. (laughs) 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 You too. Yeah. Well, do you mind not have a camera up there? I did some work really connecting to my womb last year as I was going through menopause to to grieve never having had children. So I think this is really powerful work. That's beautiful, Diane. Gosh, I think there is another call. There's a whole new, yeah, a whole range of subjects there. Oh, yeah, you've opened it up there. (laughs) I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to my parents that they wandered around naked Mm. and that I saw bodies and that I was on a farm and saw animals reproducing. And at some level, I had that. I'm just gratitude for the fact that I had this, almost this, knowing this sensing around sexuality and that it that I've been brave and courageous and had the experiences that I've had it's sort of cementing in in me this call the gratitude and appreciation for my sexual experiences so far and my awareness around my sexuality and the fun that I've had and um, pleasure that I've had through that so thank you you're welcome. You, Melanie? Um, gosh, I don't know where to start. It's just been lovely really connecting with you, with you all and hearing your stories, mm. I think. Um, I just saw a note from Francesca on the comments on the Facebook live. She said it was just really beautiful to hear all the vulnerable sharing, and I think that's what I'm really present to is how much, first of all, how much these conversations are needed and how much it does take, and it probably shouldn't, but it takes being vulnerable and opening up, but because we haven't had these conversations as women like this. I would also say to anybody who's listening live, thank you very much. I know there's been about eight people and uh, most of you stayed the course, thank you so much. And to anybody um, listen to the recording, benefit of this panel is um, enormous. You know, we are having this conversation, but in this short period of time, in an hour, I feel very deeply connected now to you, Diane, and you, Sunday. Mm-hmm. I feel I want to connect more. I was already connected with Melanie. So the benefit of creating these panels is enormous uh, and goes beyond just the conversation. They really deepen um, our sense of community. So I would encourage people to just come on a panel. Just just do it, yeah. And just to finish off, I just want to add, uh, we had only scheduled this one, but we certainly don't think the conversation's over. And, you know, we will be looking to continue these conversations and maybe have different uh, sessions where we go into more depth with with a particular conversation around sex and sexuality because I think this is such a um, needed and incredible subject so I just want to finish by thanking everyone thanking Diane and Sunday for joining us and Gwen it's been lovely to partner up with you and um, yeah let's all do it again soon Look forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Diane. Excellent. Thank you. And I'm going to stop the Facebook Live now. So. And the